my finger over the... There we go. Stop it before it goes crazy. Also, yes, there is a chat embedded on this. For anybody wondering. This, this layout is mad bootleg, but... It's better than just black bars everywhere. The very limited video editing tools I have. Video editing. Image editing. Even better. Oh, my controls work. That's good. My goals? That wasn't really goals. That was, uh, shit that happened. Uh, that I didn't expect to happen. Oh man, look at those names getting cut off in the text, in the, in the voice thing. I don't think there's a way to fix that. So it really is like an RPG stream. We're, we're favoring the, the six word, the, the six character names here. In the embedded stream chat, that's cool. Um... <laughs> oh man, we got layouts maybe. Yeah, it's like, it's not even poverty layout anymore, it's bootleg layout and it's- wow, I can't even see your name. What is that about? Oh god. My name's also Pick. Yeah, nice to meet you, Pick. I don't know what it's doing that. Maybe I have to increase the width of this thing? Okay, let's add it. Let's add some pixels to it. That's too many pixels. Uh, just shuffling things. Okay, I think somebody messaged me now. See if it works. Oh, look at that. Much better. Weeb. <laughs> it comes up as weeb. That's funny. I actually want to fix that, but I don't know how. Is there like a way to ignore like status symbols or... Oh yeah, if I, if I turn off like the... The badges it works, but... Nobody wants their badges. Maybe the font size could go down a bit. Let's try that. Relaunch it. Alright. Hey chat. Yo, what's up? Five T's are streaming. I know this never happens. Alright, I I'm gonna try and uh... Oh god, the names are still getting cut off. I'm trying to figure out how this would work. Because I, I have no idea how, how chat programming works, because I'm shit. I'm shit and can't code a layout. <laughs> uh, give me a moment. Hibiscus tea? I've heard good things. Well, well, for now, nobody gets their badges on stream. That'll help, like, names show up better, I guess. Oh, wait, maybe that's why it didn't work. I didn't save the fucking settings. Here. But let's just, just, let's, let's, let's try this. And then launch the damn thing. Okay. Oh, there we go! Look at that! That's much better. Okay, well, we're good to go. We're good to go. Solid. Let's play some Mario RPG. Are they gonna be like, that name's already used? Let's see what says that. Oh, it doesn't! Wow. Alright. 
Oh, you know, I'm actually shocked I haven't streamed this game before. I'm gonna be switching to Mario 3 later tonight. Probably do some arbitrary progress time. But, uh... In the meantime, we're playing this. No, really, I've streamed, like, Paper Mario 1, Paper Mario 2, Super Paper Mario, but I've never done this. Which actually surprised me. So I figured, you know, I should probably amend that. Because this, this is technically the progenitor, when you really think about it. This is th the one that started it. Oh, I love this game. I think, like, you could make the argument that this game is a bit old and has a lot of really weird things about it that make it kind of, like, not as... not as consistent or rounded as the other RPG games, but I think, like, it has a lot of charm. And it was definitely, like, one of the first times the Mario universe ever really tried to get expanded, which is really interesting. Like... The Mario universe didn't really exist, at least to the extent that you'd need like, that you would want for an RPG when this game was made. Like, there wasn't really much to work with when this game came out. So Square basically had to make up a whole bunch of shit. And the result is really unique. Um, it's definitely interesting. Oh, I know they, uh, I saw the now hiring ad. I don't know if I'd say really good, but it's definitely interesting and charming. It's stuff they would never do again for a lot of reasons, but at the same time, it's really fascinating and cool to play through. Especially in like the context of what we know about Mario now. Because this is when Mario was still like kind of eking out a definition of what Mario was. Because Mario don't even around for about Well, actually for quite a while. This game came out what, nine like 96, 97? Mario had been around for about 11, 12 years, but he never really, you know. Did a lot of big experimental stuff to, to this level, at least with original ideas and stuff. So it's really interesting just to see like the the Mario RPGs eke out an existence. So <laughs> there's a lot of cool stuff about uh, the way things work in this game that, that I feel like mentioning. This game has a lot of really strange mechanics in it. And it also has the prototype for kind of like how Mario RPG games would play. Like it's sort of like... I actually consider this game to be the first time Square made an FF8 game. Not necessarily for like Junction and whatnot, but like when, you, when I think of how fighting works in Final Fantasy VIII, it's a lot like this. Where you have like action commands to attack, although there's defense too. But like this kind of like set the standard for Mario as well, where action commands were a thing. But, unlike later Mario RPGs, you can't block everything. So, like, there are, there are magic attacks in this game that you just have to hold. Like, you have to hold that when they come out. Like, there's, there's no blocking that. So, like, it's kind of like the, the halfway mark to what we understand a Mario RPG to be nowadays. It's not necessarily all the way there. It's, like, halfway there. But it, it did introduce that mechanic, so that was cool. And also this sword. And and but what's great about this thing is that I always thought that sword was smithy. I mean, I'm sure everybody did when they were younger, because, like, what, what what's a smithy? Like, where the hell smithy was? I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I always did. When I was a kid, anyways. There goes Mario. This game also has an aesthetic that I don't think a lot of other Mario games even, like, tried to do. It's really weird. It's- it is definitely, like, late 90s experimental phase. Uh... <laughs> a lot of it's, like... I can't even say, like, full clay model, but it looks a lot like it. Like this really weird pseudo-realistic clay model thing. Especially if you look at like the game's old like art, like the art around the game and like the renders. 
Yeah, the sword is Xor, I believe. But yeah, like, there's like, this weird pseudo-clay... semi-realistic aesthetic, like... You can definitely tell Donkey Kong Country kinda, like, set some sort of standard somewhere to somebody, because... Like, it's a similar idea. I also like that every character in this game uh, talks to Mario and is, like, acknowledging the fact that he doesn't talk. It's really weird. And every f any fuckery with the game? No. No, this is just actually the game. I'd, I'd contemplated doing maybe a ROM hack of it, but I thought I haven't actually streamed the original game. So I probably should do the original first before I do anything like that. I mean, there's a lot of ways to fuck with this game. There's a randomizer for it. There's, a uh, There's, like, two different ROM hacks that are both balanced really differently. That come to mind, anyways, for stuff that you could stream. There's a bunch of other mini ROM hacks that I don't think would be worth streaming, but, like, the two ones are, like, Revolution and, like, Armageddon. And they're both, like, completely different angles for what they wanted this game to do or be like. But I felt like the, the original... Is something I, I le like legit dead ass never streamed and probably should have. By the way, does, does the game like look good? Does it look like it's actually at 60? I hope it, I hope it actually like is, is, is crisp this footage. Good time to ask because we haven't even gotten to like the real game yet. So. Okay, now one thing I will give this game over something like Paper Mario is uh. They at least start you off with the action commands, because the one reason I have a lot of trouble going back to Paper Mario... Hang on, I gotta, uh... Whoops. Gotta move the game window a bit. Oh my goodness. I just don't want it overlapping with my stream setup, it looks weird. But, uh, one thing about this game that I like more than Paper Mario is that, uh... Well, how do I put it? Oh, hang on. Is that it? Basically... Huh. Oh god, I'm having trouble talking. I spent a whole day at work today. Not a whole day, like a couple hours. But, buh. Excuse me. The original Paper Mario game... Oh no, I didn't want to do that. Whatever. The original Paper Mario doesn't give you action commands until, like, after the Goomba King. So the first, like, chunk of the game, like, that first opening area is really boring. Uh, it probably wouldn't have been as boring if they gave you the action commands right away. Because it's really, really annoying to play Paper Mario 1 and have to deal with all that, because it's really slow. Because when you're playing Paper Mario or any Mario RPG without the timed hits mechanic or like the, the timing mechanic, it's basically like watching overly cinematic things that don't look that good. Like, Super Robot Wars is a game where I can watch the animations without pressing anything because it's really pretty. Paper Mario 1 is not really pretty to watch like that in that way. Like, it's, it's an aesthetically good looking game, but it, it's not pretty to look at animate like that. Like, not it does, it does not warrant sitting there and waiting for it. So, like, it's just really boring to play, like, the first prologue, like, the prologue of the game. Once you get the time hits, it's perfectly fine. But the prologue is just horrible. And honestly, I I'm, I'm shocked that there's not, like, a ROM hack of it that gives you the action commands right away. Because if there was, I'd play that. I would honestly just play that as my... My only way to play. I don't even care, like, they don't start you with the hammer. But the action command is really, really, really... Really important. Either way, we're, we're going to the first real area of the game now, so I can stop talking about other games and start talking about this one. So here's our first real battle with actual stakes. Goombas are pretty easy. I should mention there's a... there's like a... I forget how, how wide the window is. I think it's like three frame window or something. It's it's two or three frames. Where if you block, you take no damage. Timed hits are really interesting. I believe unarmed timed hits only have a good, a meh, and a no timing damage value. Whereas other weapons have like 
multiple timings to do different damages. Like, there's optimal, there's sometimes slightly less than optimal. It's weird. Basically, weapons are way more finicky about how you time your hits with them in this game for the damage formula. And there are some damage variants as well. Like, uh, each weapon has its own damage variance value. Whereas your unarmed attacks do not have a damage variance to them. So, like, something like the Lazy Shell, I think, has a lot of damage variants. And, like, the Masher that you get in Booster's Tower, that's another weapon with a ton of fucking variants on it that makes, like, damage go all over the place. So, that's worth noting when you start seeing me attack later with regular weapons. There is a lot of stuff going on with the damage formula and damage variants in the game. I'm really not blocking that well. Oh wow, that was terrible. But yeah, there's like a specific timing for every enemy. Oh yeah, Gino. That's another one of the things that came from this game. That's a classic thing that came from this game. Oh nice, good block. So that's what I mean by you block and you take zero. That's a really important technique when you fight Jinx, which I guess I'll have to do on the stream at some point. Yeah, Gino was owned by Square, and Square kind of effed off with Nintendo after this, uh, after the SNES. Once the PS1 came out, they just kind of went, yeah, no. Nah. We're not gonna do shit on the N64, so like, Nintendo was like, okay, whatever. It is what it is. I mean, he's a costume in uh, Smash 4. That's nice, I guess. Yeah, Gino Whirl is one of the funniest things ever to me. It's mad broken for, like, one boss that you exploited on, and that's it. Like, against regular enemies, I guess it's pretty cool, but I mean, at the same- would you really need that much damage for any regular enemy in the game? I don't think it, it ever justifies, like... It, it doesn't really justify itself as a move. But I mean, it's not like you have to invest in it or anything to get it. It's not a difficult thing to get, Gino World is just something you get, so like... I don't like complaining about it too much, because, well... It's just... you just get it. You're inevitably gonna get it, so whatever. Gino has a couple other moves that are just really good though, like Gino Boost. Gino Boost, Gino Beam is okay. Uh, what's the fucking Gino Rainbow Beam? I don't know the fuck that one's called. Gino Blast, I think? I don't remember. We'll get it when we get it. Oh yeah, he was in Mario & Luigi. I don't even think he was in the remake though. He, he got axed from the remake. He didn't make it to the, the redone version. Which is weird, because he was in Smash, so you'd think. Uh, Bowser sucks in this game. Gino- <laughs> The best team, for what I recall, was Mario Gino Peach, because Gino's busted as shit. Bowser's pretty good when you get him, though. And I mean, he's not unusable. It's just, he's probably the worst character in the game. But he's still solid. I mean, you can use anybody in this game, it's a really easy game. The only time you really have to optimize anything is, like, Q-Likes, and, like, that's it. The Mario & Luigi 1 Remake is pretty good. Uh, there are some differences, but for the most part it's basically the exact same game. The only reason I would say you should get it is if you want the entire Mario & Luigi library on your, your, your 3DS. Yeah, Mallow. Mallow's unfortunate. Mallow is like a support mage in a game where Peach exists, which is just really sad because you know, the minute you get Peach, it, like your HP stuff becomes really trivial. I mean, it already wasn't hard to stay alive in this game, but Peach just makes it even easier. Oh yeah, Mario & Luigi takes more from this because a lot of the developers that worked on this game also worked on Mario & Luigi. Uh, Alpha Dream is composed of a lot of the team that basically made this. So you're gonna see a lot of influence. They even got the same composer, which is uh, Yoko Shimomura. Everybody knows. Everybody knows that name. But, uh... Yeah, a big part of the reason 
this game influenced Mario and Luigi's because, well, yeah. I also think Mario and Luigi's Japanese name is like Mario and Luigi RPG, which is basically Mario and Luigi RPG. I, I, can't, I don't really have to explain that name, I don't think. Color Splash is a game I still haven't played. Which, I mean, I guess is not the worst thing I could say on stream. Oh. Oh man, the first real boss of the game. Do I have all my flowers? I do. Wait, did he give me a flower tab? I think he did. Yeah, we're gonna use it. I don't know if we have to use it, but we might as well. Alright, so... Here's the first boss of the game, the Hammer Brothers. They're, uh, pretty, pretty easy. Ugh. I used to think this was kind of difficult as a kid, but I thought... Eventually I got good enough at it to win it. So when you kill one of them, the other one's gonna buff his defense up and I think they start using different... Well, not different attacks, but I think they use Hammer Time a lot more now. And this is an attack that can do a lot more damage than their regular attack, but... Even then you can still block it, so it's not a big deal. Wow, we're actually not going to see it at all? Well, okay, I guess not! So they didn't even use this special attack, which... I can't say I've had happen a lot, but that's cool. Easier for me, I guess. And here's your first real weapon of the game. The game doesn't even give you, like... a weapon before this. Oh! That's not gonna happen. I mean, maybe like Mac, but Mac just sucks, so that's okay. Look, the bosses don't even get kind of challenging until Yaradovic, and even then he's not that hard either, so... Really. I think this game starts to get kind of difficult around, like, Nimbus Land. That's when it starts kind of trying. Outside of that, it's mostly just understanding. Oh yeah, you want to see what this game does do? There's this stupid shit over here. If you miss this, you can never get it. Like, if you don't get that, you, you there is no other chance in the game to get this. So I don't know who they thought, you know, who like greenlit that. Uh, but that's the only time in the game you can ever get that uh, hidden block right there. So if you miss that, you will never be able to get uh, 100%, technically. Because there's an item in the game called the treasure ring that will like play a beep beep sound whenever there's like an invisible block in a room and you'll always hear it there if you haven't hit that. You'll always hear it. You'll never be able to get rid of that sound in that one room because it's impossible to get past the opening. So I imagine they probably sold a lot of strategy guides on stupid shit like that. The Nintendo Power Help Hotline. Absolutely. I think some of those old Nintendo uh, uh, phone operating outlines are like still around. I know they still do troubleshooting for like really old consoles to some extent. Yo, what's up, Scene? How you doing? Oh yeah, Mario. Mario's acting talents are really great too, because he just turns into the other characters. I always love how they did that. That's a really cool like storytelling slash narrative thing. Really cute. I don't think any other Mario RPG's done that. Every other future Mario RPG has had, like... Oh! This, uh, Twitch delay is, uh, low latency mode. I think you can enable it in your dashboard. I don't know if it's available for everybody. Oh, I'm pretty good. I, I have Amazon Prime, so maybe they give it to me? I don't know. I guess that technically means Twitch Prime, but whatever. But yeah, they never did that whole Mario emotes and, like, talks to people like that thing past this game. I think in future games he would just, like, raise his hand or he would, like, say stuff in broken Italian. Yo, what's up, fella? Nicky, how you doing? Man, everybody's here for this game. This game is a classic, I guess. Everybody loves it. So here's a room that's really important because you can technically do it twice. Aw, oh, shit, I did the wrong one. Whoops. That's okay. 
Now we're gonna be short one flower point. Oh no! And it's a big coin. The flavor text in this game is really good if you if you ever feel like going through all of it. I'll try and like explore some of it, but I'm not really interested in talking to everybody. Uh oh. This game is mad old, so if you're like kinda young, you'll probably never know. That sounded like a fart when that man fell. Ready for the greatest jump in the game? Done by the master? Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful jump. Hey, Mallow. One of like 500 characters that never came back. Because like 80% of this game is, is shit that would never show up again. I was like crying. There was some reason. Hi, Mario. The game doesn't actually tell you to press B there. You just have to know. I imagine eventually people figured it out because they just mashed a button. Like, oh, let's hit the button. You know, Europe never got this game until the Virtual Console. That's some fuckery right there. That's the that's the most bullshit thing ever. <laughs> um. Okay, so first things first. This is this is this is this is a thing we got to do here. The shopkeeper, who is uh, a toad design that we never saw again. I don't think. I'm sure there's toads that look kind of like this. But, uh, I don't recall a toad design being specifically this one. Square really went all out with this game. Square and Nintendo really went all out with this game. This game still is absurdly rare. I mean, honestly, you'd be better off emulating it. Here's a pick-me-up. That's a free revival item. So, uh, this game only has one revival item. A lot of games have, like, one or two. Uh, like, Final Fantasy has, like, Phoenix Downs, which are revival, but not full HP. But in this game, they're like, fuck that. Here, revive your character, and they come back with all their health. So, for the item it is, it's really good. Boom! That's the only time that happens in the game. That is the only shopkeeper that cares if you jump on his thing. Anyways, invisible block. There's another one here. Let's see if I get good enough luck to get it. Oh, come on. Oh, damn it. Oh, okay, hang on. Hang on! It doesn't seem like it's important, but it is. RNG, boys. Oh, there it is. It's right there. There we go. No, come back! There we go. Ah, perfect. One flower. Good. That, that uh, increases your flower points. I'm sure anybody that saw the dialogue knows that, but... Oh, you look just like that. Mario's superpower of complete imitation is horrifying. Also, did Nintendo just say a bazooka? A bazooka. Strange. So, um, worth noting about this game's English translation, it was done by Ted Woolsey, uh, who was very famous for his amazing FF6 work. And I think this tr this uh, this localization slash translation, much like FF6, was friggin' phenomenal. And kudos to Ted Woolsey for his hard work and good contributions to video games. Because really, he may have only translated like a handful of things that we like consider relevant, but they were all really, really, really good translations. It's very much what localization is all about. Is it like Rocket Randy? You know, I don't know. I don't know at all. Okay, now the second thing we have to do, which I'm surprised I didn't do before, uh, is buy clothes. So uh, we'll get the jump shoes. Equipment in this game is pretty linear. You're not gonna really be uh, doing a whole lot of shop menuing. 
but uh, they'll be doing a bit. Generally, you don't really worry about like changing gear a whole ton. And gear upgrades, gear upgrades are pretty linear, but worth noting. Also, Mallow comes to you at level two. Uh, yeah, it's mostly stat increases. Some of them have special effects. They do explain in like the the menu. For the most part, they tell you what they do. But as it comes, we'll get to it. Oh, Masher is a Masher doesn't explain what it does because if it tried to explain it, it would make less sense to to anybody playing the game. Who didn't know how the damage formula works. M Masher is basically... I've ex I explained this earlier on stream, but it's always fun to talk about. Masher has a really high damage variance value in the game data. Which means, uh, even if you time your attack the same all the time, uh, there's still a degree of variance to the damage. And Masher has a very, very high degree. Like, like it's a really, really high number. So Masher can either do a, a bit less or a freaking lot more than it should be doing. Which makes it really interesting. Like, the hammer has a pretty low damage variance, but Masher has pretty high damage variance. I think the Lazy Shell also has pretty high damage variance, but I think the Masher has the highest in the game. Like, Masher is just the highest variance value possible, I think. There's a guide for it, I could probably put it up if I wanted to. Maybe I will when I get the hammer. Well, Lazy Shell, there's two of them. There's one that's a weapon and one that's armor. You don't have to pick at all. It's just, uh, they're named the same. The Work Pants is technically Bowser's best armor in this game, if I recall correctly, because it gives some sort of speed boost. And technically has the most stat yields. I mean, the Lazy Shell is more defense, but, like, less other stats. And it's not that big of a difference over the Work Pants and Bowser's natural bulk. So really, Bowser just wears pants the whole game. Which, I mean, he's naked most of the time anyways, so... That's a big upgrade over what he usually wears, which is nothing. Also, it's really impressive that this game manages to have variety and, and not have, like, repetitive, like, repetitive, like, landscapes when a lot of the music isn't really different. Like... There's a few generic overworld themes, and that's pretty much what you're getting. And, uh... You, it's really good, and somehow not grating. I guess it's kind of like an actual, like, platformer Mario, where the music doesn't get in your nerves, but I mean, it's still pretty impressive for something like an RPG to have that going on. Oh man, here's one of many square enemies that never came back! What the hell is this? It's a frog og, which is a giant, like, frog with a mohawk and a belt. I... I don't know. It, it has a belt, but it's not wearing anything under the belt, so it's just wearing a belt. So, uh, when you're attacking that enemy, you just want Mario to hit it and then Mallow to do that. Because, uh... Ooh. Well, modern, modern Nintendo kind of did do something like this game, I would argue. I mean, do you count uh, Mario Odyssey for being, you know, kind of crazy and innovative? Because really, nothing about that game was like anything rooted in tradition. And the Mario RPGs technically kind of did that too. Like the other ones anyways. Like the Bean Bean Kingdom and like... Although this is probably the highest, it, like the most it's ever been done. But that's because like there wasn't anything to work with back when this game came out, so... Oh yeah! So those bonuses, I guess I should explain that mechanic. When you time an attack well and kill an enemy with it, you can sometimes get a bonus flower, which is what those are. And they have multiple effects. There's Once Again, which lets you attack again. There's, like, Lucky, which gives you, like, some kind of RNG minigame to get more experience or coins. And then there's, uh, HP Max, FP Max, Defense Up, and Attack Up, I think. I think those are all the effects you can get. 
with uh, that thing. If I missed any, let me know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was it too, but you never know. It's always good to be comprehensive in your pursuit of the truth. So anyways, with Nalo, all you want to upgrade is special. All the time. That's he's, that's the best. That's the thing he's best at. It's pretty much the only thing he's gonna do. Here's a gimmick. This game also has uh, the Starman power up from prior prior Mario games. Assuming you hit the button. There we go. You just run over enemies and get a lot of experience. You do get experience for every enemy you kill with this. I don't know if we're gonna get to see the level up effect though. Oh, we don't. Maybe one of the stars I get later in the game. But you get like a little level up notification, and then you do all your level ups after the star runs out. Also, yeah, the dogs here infinitely spawn, so don't try and clear this room, because you never will. You'll be just sitting here grinding for the rest of your life if you want to do that. Which, I mean, if that's what you're into, by all means, I won't judge, but... Oh yeah, there's a lot to talk about in this game. For a game that's touted as being pretty mechanically simple, there's a lot of really weird, like, number crunching and RNG that goes on in this game. And mechanics in general. That I've just never seen in any other Mario RPG. Oh, come on. That looked like a pretty clean cat elf game. What? Peripheral vision. He actually has it. That's impressive. Honey more years. Oh, come on. He's gonna turn around now, right? Got him. And then Mallow finally just says, stop it. And now we fight Krako. Who's not pretty... He's pretty easy. So all you do is Fire Orb for the first turn. Because it has a special effect on this boss. Youch! And this is when they couldn't really animate much of anything going on in this game. So it's like... Oh, he's dowsing a tail fire. Just trust me. So all you want to do is Fire Orb him and have Mallow hit him. Nalo can't really do much damage to him with lightning anyways, and it's just a waste of flower points. So just have Mallow hit him and use Honey Syrup for you. Nice perfect block. Three frame window! Let's use that now. Oh, we get a freebie? Come on. Freebie, 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 freebie. Aw. So there's a mechanic called a uh, freebie, where if you use an item, sometimes you'll just not use it up. I don't know what the RNG value is for it specifically, but I know it's random, and it's a nice effect. It's nice to use an item and not have to worry about losing it. That's kind of a neat trick. Oh, uh, yeah, he self-heals. I think he only does that once. It's a little annoying, but not that bad. That was a perfect fire orb, wow. Wonderful. Oh fuck, I didn't look at my, my flower points. Whoops. Freebie! 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 Oh. Come on, man! Give it to me every other time. Wow, perfect fire orb again! Nice! Uh, there we go. Get the coin. Get that coin, Mallow. Get that shit. Oof! Take your grubby old coin.
Anyways, here's a teleporter. This game's teleporter equivalent, which is just springs. So I think we're kind of low level for what we're going up against next, but it doesn't really matter. It's easy. You know, you don't really have to grind in this game at all. If you fight most of what you're supposed to, you'll level up enough. Anyways, here's another new thing in this game, kind of. Uh, Shy Guys have showed up in other Mario RPGs, but not this kind. Oh, so here's your first magic spell from an enemy in this game. Uh, yeah, there you go. Magic! You can't block it. So no matter what you do, magic will always do set damage. So there's no way to defend against it, specifically, outside of just having good stats. If you don't have good stats, magic will do damage. That's just, just as simple as that. I don't know what, why it's called Drain, but it, it does exist. Has a spell with- has any spell with Drain in it ever been, like, good? Oh, I used to be able to perfect guard that all the time. Anyways, these guys are weak to lightning, I think. They're pretty vulnerable to it. Spell sword drain? Okay, spell sword anything is broken. I don't think that's that's fair. That's not the spell drain, that's the spell sword using the spell drain. Card games? That's that might be a good point. Spell sword can make anything broken if you give him rapid fire. But let's be truthful here. And you wouldn't ever use anything but flare rapid fire. <laughs> Which is fun. That's a fun strat. Your spell swords just never have the attack command selected. It's always just magic and then rapid fire. Flare rapid fire is so good. That's a strategy right there. Top level strategy. Oh, nice. Uh-oh. Anyways, I don't want to waste MP on this guy. MP. Flower points. Sorry. No, it's MP. Totally. This guy's like, wow, thanks. Hey, that's the wallet I got stolen. Yeah, give it back to him. If you give it back, he'll give you a uh, flower tab? Yeah. That's what it was. Oh, we have a few of those. Let's use it. Let's use them. I always forget I have these. Because I'm used to like automatic upgrades in a lot of RPGs, so it's easy to forget that you have them. Anyways, here's the one time you'll see the house battle background in the game. They made this battle scene specifically for this part of the game, which is admirable. I don't think you ever see it used again. Oh no, not again. So most characters in this game have like a gimmick, uh, or like a, a stat yield that, that favors something. Mario's is surprisingly just being good at everything. Or maybe it's unsurprising, but Mario's just like, like the second best at just about everything. But given that he's a mandatory party member, uh, it makes sense. Whoops, I didn't time that at all. Yeah, Mario's basically like the, the best or second best at just about everything. Although he's technically the best character. Actually, no, no, he is the best because once you get the super suit, he's broken. He's absolutely busted with the super suit. Granted, that takes a lot of fucking, like, two to three frame inputs in a row. But if you do get it... I mean, even without it, he's probably the best character. But with it, he's just dumb. Anyways, Mallow at this point can now one-shot every one of those guys, so the minute Mallow attacks, uh, we've won the battle. Also, remember that room where that guy was telling us how all the boxes worked and everything? If you thought Square was smart enough to program the fact that it's, it's a room with one-time events, you were completely incorrect. Because everything respawns here for this part of the game, so you can just come back here and get all that again for the second time. So be sure to get it the first time, because you can get it again here. It's 
It's a cool oversight, but it lets you up your flower by like up, up your flowers by one. It's not a huge upgrade, but I mean whatever. Wow, nice miss, nerd. Yeah, Mario's a really <laughs> Mario's a real good role model. So also, who's excited for me to freaking make a Mario 3 stream layout on the fly? With just I have an idea for what I want to do with it. I just don't know if I can. I might actually have to wait for image editing software for that. So much for him. Hanging out in here is like. That's the Vault Guard! But here's a cool item, Wake Up Pin. You can't be put to sleep. Uh, there's no enemy in the game right now that has that ability, but there's the Wake Up Pin in case there is one? I don't even know when sleep becomes a status effect in this game. Wait, that Toad's running away, better save him. There's some event stuff we can do here. Dialogue. The moral obligation to save the Toads. Oh no, drop rims! There we go. Oh, you hate to see that kind of thing happen. Oh, damn it. Jesus. I'm doing really bad with the hammer right now. <laughs> Not making a hammer look good. Oh yeah, <laughs> if you kill the one on the left first, he actually walks by. But it's really funny. The animation that plays is really funny. I probably should have done that, but whatever. Anyways, one of the easiest bosses in the game is coming up. Hope you're excited. They make him look pretty intimidating, but he's really, really easy. Of course. We have some dialogue. Not so fast, pal. Can't even bounce. Maybe we can bounce on his head. Good idea. I like that we're under the implication that there are shy guys that don't know who the hell Mario is. I guess, like, maybe they're not shy guys native to the Mushroom Kingdom, but, like, it's still really funny to me. It's really funny to me. Well, yeah, but like, I don't know. Does Smithy just conveniently have Shy Guys? Like, I guess Square didn't really think about that. That's fine. You bet. What games are Shy Guys in Mario 2? Yeah, I guess that's fair. Because did Yoshi's Island come up before this game or after this game? Oh yeah, check this out. Oh, not yet. I guess we can't do it yet. We'll come back here later. There's something important. Because of course I know about that. Uh, okay. Um, let's look through this guy. Oh, whoops. Okay, so like, Shy Guys have kind of been established in Mario's world already then, so like... I don't know. Oh! Also, I should note, when you use the defense command in battle, uh, you do actually defend against magic damage as well. Which is something that if you play other RPGs you wouldn't expect, but it is a thing in this game. Let's just throw it out there. Magic damage and physical damage are calculated under different tables, but they, they both fall under categories that can be defended. And we drop frames again, so I'm gonna try and fix that now. A moment. Let's try a lower bitrate. Probably shit the we we don't need a bitrate that high. Alright. If we drop frames again, I'll try and switch servers. I say as we drop frames again. Alright. Everybody give me a moment. I will be right back. Momentarily. <laughs> 